Hi guys, you're welcome to the Lover Studios. This is another episode of Android Programming. We'll be talking about the smart lock for passwords on Android. You can automatically sign users into your app using the credentials they have saved. Users can save both username, password credentials and federated identity provider credentials. Uh, integrating the smart lock for passwords, uh, you'll be using the credentials API to retrieve saved credentials on signing. Uh, usefully retrieved credentials to sign the user in or you use uh, the credentials API to rapidly onboard new users by partially completing your app sign in or sign up form. So there's a sign up form that will actually enable you to have a new uh, credentials. This is going to prompt users after signing in or sign up to store their credentials for future automatic authentication. I will be moving straight to Android Studio where I have the source code whereby you will going to be talking on how to integrate the smart lock for passwords into an Android application. Right there in my uh, source files in the, build, the, the build Gradle, the project and the model app session, for the model app, we actually don't have, need any com uh, dependencies. You know? The default dependencies are okay, which is the support app comfort version 7, uh, the support design and the libs uh, to tell you where you can get the jar files. The same thing goes for the build gradle project session uh they are all maintained i'm using the build uh gradle 2.1.0 i'll be going straight to the rest uh where we'll talk about the layout files i have the activity change credentials the activity content and the activity main the fragment signing and the fragment splash xml let's get to look at the activity main xml uh, this is a linear layout with uh, the orientation vertical layout with an height match parent context uh, calling the main activity class. We have a frame layout that houses this, whereby we assign an ID to it called fragment container. That's where the fragment uh, signing uh, is being uh, called. Uh, we have the layout with an height match parent. Let's get to look at the fragment signing. Is holding on to the signing interface. What about we have the relative layout as the parent tag, orientation, vertical, layout with an height, match parent, margin top, bottom, left, right, all 16 dps. We call the text input tag of the uh, Android design widget, where we have our edit text to hold on to the username edit text. Uh, we call, we have to close it up uh, with the tag. We call another text input layout. Uh, whereby we're going to have the ID for the password text input layout. This is for the password. And the layout is sitting below the username text input layout. Uh, we have the edit text you know, to actually hold on to the text uh, input. And the internet is password. We have the closing text input layout. So you're going to have the username and the password fields. A linear layout comes up whereby we are sending an ID to it called uh, linear layout and the layout is below the password text input layout whereby it houses two buttons. The first button is to clear the text uh, input uh, on the edit, uh, text field while the second button is to actually sign in uh, the user whereby we are signing an ID to it called sign in button. A progress bar as uh, is there, whereby uh, it's, we have an ID for it called sign in progress. This is a progress dialog that will be triggered uh, anytime you're signing in or when you're launching the application. Uh, that closes the relative layout for the sign in uh, example. We have a fragment splash. Uh, you know, we all know what a splash screen is, which is like the introductory uh, layout to your application. This is a linear layout with a layout with the night nice match parent. The rotation is vertical. The graphic is center vertical uh, alongside center horizontal. Uh, the text view uh, is welcome to smart lock. Uh, you can decide to edit this to your taste. And uh, we have a progress bar that, that continues to, uh, to roll until the application is eventually launched, which is the main activity. Let's get to look at the activity context. Uh, this is the 
the content rather there's a linear layout with the weight and height match parent layout the padding left right top bottom are all 16 dps as we know uh we have a button for sign out and another button for change credentials that is when uh the, the login has been successful uh this is the next activity that is going to be called should have this uh functionality whereby you can easily sign out from it and you can decide to change your credentials as the app user or the app owner we have the activity change credentials which is like you want to edit your credentials uh it's a relative layout with the padding right top 16 dps the context is change credential activity it has a text input whereby we have the edit text for the username one you have the access to change up to three usernames uh, and for password as well uh, edit text for password i'll call it from the string uh xml this text input is for the second username you no know? uh we have for the second password we have also for the third username you know and for the third password so you have the access to change to have up to three different usernames and password so in the case whereby you forgot one definitely you can't forget the second and even if you forget the second you shouldn't forget the third so you have three access to change uh, your uh, the username you can decide to input the same username and password if you wish to but if you feel that you have a uh, different usernames and password right at your fingertips you can decide to uh, lock them in you have the button to actually text which has holds the save and course is a save button it's actually going to trigger the save so it's going to save these credentials that's what that is going to do so that takes us down to our java classes where we have uh, the chain credential activity the code lab utility the content activity the main activity sign in fragments splash fragments usernames and passwords these are all classes that have been used in this uh course of this application we'll be looking at the main activity of this particular integration we imported the intent the bundle the fragments and the app combat activity inclusively the java utility list the main activity extends app combat activity where we have private static fields and one public uh the main activity the rc save the rc read uh is resolving is requesting splash fragment sign in fragment and the delay in milliseconds which is three which is like three seconds uh we're going to add the m google api clients and the m is resolving fields here you know. these are all api clients from google because google is actually powering the smart lock is actually making this available for us the super on create seven stand states whereby you call on the content view the activity main in this particular uh, uh, active, uh on create you're going to have the set fragment which is going to get the intent now this is going to check for the safe instance state to keep uh cognizance that uh probably uh, a process has been done probably it has been logged in before so that you won't be able to repeat the process all over again so when you when you are not using the smart lock it's going to show or set a fragment to the on create uh, method uh we have the on save instance state you know which is this are uh, being passed into whereby the save user's current signing state and i told you about that so that is it is a billion so it's actually going to save the, the present state of the user so to actually know if he has or she has logged in or she, yeah the user needs to uh we uh log in again you know always call the super class so it can save the view hierarchy state as that uh we have the on set fragments when you're trying to set fragment now this, this is going to set the appropriate fragment given the state of the activity and the intent used to start it if the intent is a launcher intent the splash fragment is shown otherwise the signing fragment is shown here so uh the best uh fragment or the first layout should be the splash fragment uh, which is going to show uh, a first launch but if that has been done it's going to move straight to the sign-in fragment that's what this is doing so if the intent is not equal to null uh it's going to actually call on the splash fragment else it's going to call on the sign-in fragment so that is going to let us 
get a look of what these two fragments are actually doing in the main activity. That's that. Uh, we're going to start the content activity and finish this as well. Now, on set sign in enabled, you know, this if the current display fragment is the sign in fragment, then it's going to enable or disable the sign in from uh, form. You know, this is what it's going to do. So, if the current display fragment is the sign in, it's going to actually instantiate and call on the sign in uh, the form that is being used. Uh, we're going to have the get current uh, fragment tag, you know, Baba uh, is going to actually get the tag of the currently set fragment, you know, and uh, if the tag of currently set fragment is null, or if the no fragment is set, it's going to actually uh, appropriately show that gracefully. Uh, so that takes us down to the signing fragment, and there's one other aspect that I really want us to look at. Uh, when you go to start the content activity and finish this one, it's going to call on the content activity you know. uh that's different we have two up to two to three different intent calls uh that is going to be triggered based on uh, what you're actually doing on the main activity so that takes us down to the content activity signing activity and the splash fragment let's get to look at uh, the signing fragment which is actually going to enable us to lock in uh the details that we have you know uh this is going to do uh we are for the chain credentials button uh, whereby you set and unclick this now to this and this is going to trigger what and it's it it's going to trigger the change credentials activity class so that takes us to change credentials activity class what's this going to do uh, this is going to give us the ability to uh lock in up to three different usernames and up to three different passwords probably you want to change your credentials that's what this is doing it extends that proper activity we have our private fields, the username, text input 1, or the password 1, username 2, password 2, username 3, password 3, just have mentioned. Yeah, you have the ability to change three credentials. Uh, we instantiate it to these appropriate IDs. You know. At the same time, we get the edit text and set the text appropriately. Uh, we get the edit text for the password too because there's uh, a sort of hard coded edit text we have already, so you can decide to change that to fit what you have. We're going to see that in the strings. Uh, we have an edit text that we've hard coded as well. This is actually going to do. You're getting the edit text that has been set by default, and it's going to set, you're going to change this, and it's going to set it appropriately. So when you click on the save button, uh, this is going to lock in, and it's going to actually save this as the username one, the password one. Username two, the password two, username three, and the password three, based on the values cut in from the edit text. So I think that is clear, and it's going to toast that the credentials updated outside the smartphone. Definitely, it has been uh, updated uh, successfully. Let's get to look at the strings. Uh, so actually, let us see uh, the edit text that we have. You know, if you should look, uh, you have the username one in, so that's the username uh, for the password. You have password one, these are what that's been encoded. Two, password username two, password two for the username three, for the password three. But you have the access to be able to change this uh, after you might have logged in with these. It's a new aspect we need to look at. Manifest. Uh, we have our main activity as the launcher, which our main activity is going to actually choose the splash or choose the sign in based on uh, the first entry points. If you've actually done that before, you can lock it down to the signing. And if you've already signed in into your application and you're not yet signing out, it's going to go straight to the content activity. That was what this is not. So it's going to go to the content activity. And we have the change credentials. If from the content activity, you want to change uh, the username used and the path and the password that decide to change credentials. I'll be showing you the uh, the application uh, in an Android emulator so that we'll be able to see uh, how the smart lock uh, integration is being done. Right there in my emulator, we have the application called Smart Lock, and uh, we have the edit text for the username and the int username. Likewise, for the password, we have the button to clear and to, to sign in. For the username, if we can remember the username, the first username used is username one. So that's just what you use to sign in. The present user, 
in one. The same thing goes for the password. Password one. That's fine. You click on the sign in button to get you signed in. That's okay. You get your content activity class. This can be any activity you feel like using, but uh, it's going to be uh, it's not going to be cool if the user can't change that default password so that anybody can't just bash into the application with the use of uh, username one and password one. So that takes us down to the change credentials. Uh, you need to change that. Uh, uh, details you know to what will actually suit you or what you feel will be more secret now for the first username and decide to use our Taylor Studios the same thing goes for the password just to be at a safe side. So you might have filled in um, the username for the first username, password, the second, the password, the third, the password. Uh, you click on your save button to actually save these credentials. Can you see credentials updated outside SmartLock? Uh, it has been saved. Uh, you can go back uh, to your application by clicking the back button uh, you can decide to sign out now I'll try the former username and password and see maybe I'll have access to login which is username wow do you notice that it's already triggering it triggers the invalid username definitely the same thing goes for password which is password one what do you say invalid password so definitely you can't use this credential anymore so we're going to use uh the edited credentials or let's say the updated credentials which is worth Same thing goes for the password. Am I, am I correct with this password? And just start over. That's fine. Uh, if you notice, no form of uh, span error uh, message showing. So definitely, you're on cost. You're, you are, you're on the right path. I'll have to click sign in to actually test this out. Very cool. Very, very cool. It's working. It's smart. It's intelligent to pick our, the new credentials. It saved this and actually is actually populating this out too. If you notice, I'm in my content activity and I have uh, my sign in credentials updated to the newest uh, username and password. You can decide to uh, integrate this into your application. This is very cool. Uh, the smart lock works smooth, smoothlessly and is doing great. It accepts in authentication without any backend code or without any backend or server uh, communication. It's actually doing great. And I would like you to take uh, uh, take uh, advantage of the smart lock uh, implementation in your Android application. Thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout this uh, session. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.